Have you ever wondered how people in the New Testament shared the message of Jesus in their own particular style? That's what we'll talk about today. At the end of the day, the biggest obstacle to evangelism is Christians who don't share the gospel. Albert Moeller. Today, we're going to talk about the various styles people had in sharing the Word of God in the New Testament. Believe it or not, even the people who followed Jesus were different individuals. They had different styles. They had different writing. They had different ways about going over things. And so we'll talk a little bit today about how they did it. And maybe one of those styles will mean something to you. Whenever I think about how people are in the body of Christ or even throughout the world, I think about 1 Corinthians 12, 14 through 17, where it talks that the body is made up of many parts. I mean, some people are eyeballs, and some people are elbows, and some people are toes, and some people, like me, are mouths. But we all have the unique gifts that God gave us, the ways we deal with people the best. And it's like DNA. You know, we used to think that people were like this or that or A or B or C or D, but now we're learning through DNA that personality traits are all over the place. We have people who are extroverts who don't like large groups of people. That's me. We have people who are introverts who love dancing and parties. We have people who are artistic, who show their true feelings through their art. And when I hear about the body of God, that's what I think about. Even though we are the same body, We are all very different. And that's where I think evangelism, as we talked about the last podcast, is important to find the way we're good at it, to find the methods and the words and the stories and how we say it in a way that makes sense to the way we are. I think one of the fundamental problems with the church in general, and no church is immune from this, we're going to have evangelism day. Here's a hundred pamphlets. I want you to go knock on doors for everyone and invite them to church on Sunday. And whether you're an introvert, whether you're like me and you like to talk to people, we're all doing the same activity that we may or may not be very good at. And there's no room in our church evangelism days for different people or different styles or taking those gifts and making it work for that person. If you gave 100 pamphlets to my best friend and said, here, go hand these out, she'd be horrified. But she could talk to me and tell me about Jesus. If you tell me to go knock on doors, I'm going to talk to those people for a half hour each. It's not my style. But I've known people who are very good at it. Some people are good at art or music and are great at sharing their feelings about God through that. Some people are great at debate and arguing. There used to be this uh, fellow who used to come to our campus, and he would just walk into a bar and challenge people. And sometimes he got thrown out on his ear. Sometimes people listened to him and walked out the door once he got tossed out. Some people are good at telling an amazing story or sharing something amazing about their life and their story. Other people are great examples, and like my friend's family, solid people that you want to emulate. And then there's other people who are just great at inviting people, complete strangers, to come to church on Sunday or do something with the church. We used to have this guy who went to my church when I was there in college, and he was so good at just hanging around playing Frisbee in the front yard of the church. And then anytime someone walked by, he would invite them to, hey, you want to come here on Sunday? And we also have Wednesday service. Now, I did notice that most of the people he invited were women, and I do think it was his method of finding dates. But I tell you, at one point, like 70% of the church was women because he was just so good at inviting women to come. But that was his gift, and I think you have to find whatever gift makes your situation work. Jesus was a storyteller. He told all the parables. You know, when he brought all the people in and you know, made them all lunch and talk to them. There were so many parables he told because he could tell the message of God through story. He'd say, there's a farmer who went out to sow his seed, or there was a son who's the prodigal son. 
He was so good at the storytelling. He wasn't afraid or shy to tell the bold and honest truth, but he certainly is inspire people with his storytelling. And some other ways I think that people forget a lot of times is that Jesus met people where they were at. When people needed peace, Jesus gave them peace. When people needed to hear the truth about their lives, like Mary Magdalene, Jesus told them the truth. When someone like Matthew or Levi, who were tax collectors, needed a better mission in life, Jesus gave them one. Jesus also prayed for us all the time. He prayed for himself. He prayed for us. And so even the power of prayer is something we can't ignore. Us praying for other people. When my friend's family prayed for me, I don't know the impact of that. All the people in my past who told me about Jesus prayed for me. It's hard to see that impact. But I know that when my friend told me about the fact they were praying for me, it melted a lot of atheism anger I had myself. So it's important to understand that we have to reach people where they're at, but we have to pray. We have to ask for the Holy Spirit, who is the bringer of faith, to come. We have to hope that eyes are open and ears are open. And we have to pray for boldness for ourselves, too. There's people like Peter, who could be very direct, very blunt, told it like it was. Peter had his own faults, his own weaknesses. But his strength was saying the thing that needs to be said. I have a friend that's very close to me who is that person. She is ultimately fantastic at saying the thing that needs to be said, that no one's willing to say. And sometimes I don't think people value that as much as the peacemakers. I'm the moderator. I'm the peacemaker. I find the middle way. I bring people together. But you need to have that bold truth. As much as you have to have someone like me who tries to find the nice way out. Or you can be like Paul. He loved being logical and reasoning people through things and being a counselor. He wrote those letters to try to counsel the church, figure out what was going wrong, and find a way to inspire them to be better than that. In Acts, He went to the synagogues and reasoned with the Jews that were there. He also talked to the Greeks. He went to the marketplace, the Agora, and he talked about the Greek literature of the time. It was clear that he knew literature, that he knew sports, and he used these analogies and these debating points to get to a group of people that were very intellectual. And so that was his strength. I think that's why I always like Paul, because I like people who do that. I hope that that's part of my style, too. Andrew saw Jesus. He was the first one. And the very first thing he did is he went and got his family. You got to see this guy I just met. That's where he brought Simon, who was Peter, and brought him to Jesus. So he ran back and brought other people. So that takes a boldness. And the woman at the well, got this truth message. And this is a time that Jesus was not telling a story. Why are you not with your husband? Why are you with like the fifth guy who is not your husband? You know, he saw everything and the woman ran back to her people and she's like, come see the man who just told me everything I had ever done. This guy's amazing and brought her whole community. So she was able also to bring people in, to bring people back. And so her legacy lives on in that story at the well. There's the friends of the paralyzed man who cut a hole in somebody's roof, lowered him down, and all because they wanted him to see Jesus. Sometimes it's an act of service that we do. We help people in an extraordinary way like those four friends, but bringing people to Jesus sometimes is through an action. Sometimes we just tell people what happened. So there was the man who was blind in John 9, and he says, you don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. So it was him sharing a monumental event in his life 
It makes me think of the word witnessing. Someone said that we weren't meant in Jesus' world to be the prosecutor, to be the evidence maker, to be a lawyer, to be a historian. Some people don't feel comfortable saying the word of God because they don't have exactly all the right steps and the exact history together. We are supposed to be the witness. This is what happened. I saw it with my own eyes. I was there. What are the miracles in your life? What are the things that Jesus has done for you that you can be a witness to? You don't have to be eloquent or anything like that. When we think about witnesses, we think of someone who saw a crime. That guy, he went through a stop sign. It's not eloquence. It's reporting what happened. Then there's people who were an example. You know, Paul, when he was locked in the prison and then their chains came off and the guard was going to, I think, kill himself because his prisoners were going to be free and he was going to be basically put to death anyway. Instead of leaving, Paul felt for the jailer and said, don't worry, don't worry. We're here. We're not leaving. Don't harm yourself. It's all cool. And that man fell in front of them, Paul and Silas and said, what must I do to be saved? Their example, their actions inspired someone to be a part of Christ's world. There was a person named Tabitha or Dorcas in Acts 9, and she, they said, quote, was full of good works and acts of charity, and she became ill and died. And the impact she had on that community, people were weeping that says, And they were showing everyone the tunics and the other garments that she made for them. But you could see before she was raised that her life was important and meant something to the community. That giving, that act of service was everything. Then instead of personal styles or preferences, think about location preferences. There are people who are great at mass, large group speech telling. I like to think I'm a good public speaker. I do it quite a bit when I can, and I love doing it. But some people are very good at telling the gospel of message and reaching large amounts of people at the same time. Think about Billy Graham and his tent revivals. But then there's also inviting people to your house, seeing the cross on your wall, talking about how important that is. You know, over a meal, having movie night, board game night. You know, we brought a lot of people into my church because we had this really terrible basement. And what we would do is have all these fun events inside this basement. And people came over just to have fun with us. But it gave us the opportunity to also tell them how important the message of the gospel is to all of us. There's certainly people who need visiting in the hospital or in places where there's the elderly are facing some pretty tough and challenging times and maybe even the end of their lives. I remember I was in a home for more elderly people, and this woman was talking to me and wondering if she can be forgiven. I was like, of course you can be forgiven. I don't know who she was, and I don't know what happened, but of course God will forgive her. So, you know, you can bring that message because of that location and because people are really looking for the human connection. You can pray with them, you can pray for them, and you can just talk to them like human beings. And some people do prison evangelism. Another group of people who are desperate for that human connection. And if they got to prison, many times that happens because the people around them weren't encouraging them to do good in their life. And so they never maybe heard a good message. They never heard kindness. They never had anyone listen to them or pray with them. And so prison evangelism is a really strong step. Some people are good at media. So if you're good at video, you're working on your YouTube channel, you got a podcast going, this is a great place to reach the message of God to other people. I'll tell you the truth about even this podcast. Right now, my first podcast, obviously because it's going for three years, is far more popular than this podcast. But the way that this podcast matters to me 
is because I wanted a way to use my gifts and talents to serve God. And so even if this podcast has barely the listenership of my other podcast, it's still important to me because it's still important for me to let you know that God loves you and he is on your side. So my challenge to you is think about these styles and locations and try to find one way that you could reach someone this month with the word of God. What's a way that you could use your gifts and take the message from last week and bring it to people so they can hear the word of God. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening. I said that I never thought this podcast would probably be as popular as my other podcast, but please tell a friend, leave a review, try to let other people know about this podcast because I would like to have more communication, a bigger community, and more people that we can get this conversation about how we can walk down that path by taking small steps. 